matter of reputation as well in the place where I live. Um, but when I came up to university, one of the things that really struck me was that I got to know various Christian friends. And they starting to see in the Bible was the same Jesus that I was starting to see in the lives of these Christian friends. Now I wonder if some of you here are thinking, yes, that's been my experience as well. Well, I'd like to ask you, you don't need to say it, ask you what your own thoughts are about this. I wonder if anybody here is similar to what I used to be. I wonder if some of us are so sure of ourselves and so confident in our convictions that if, if this is the box of your life, that nothing, nothing can get in except what you have already inside there. That's very much what I was like. Now, when I say this nothing can get in, there are all sorts of things that can hold the lid shut in somebody's life. For some, it's lots of old, I've tried to have one new belt and one old belt, I don't know if you've noticed it, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> for some people, it's the old traditional things, okay? So we heard in the play that the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders in the time of Jesus, they were the people who were against him most strongly because they said, we know what's true. And this guy's coming and trying to say different things. And for them, the strap was firmly on the lid of their lives. For, for other people, it may be other things today. It may be that you've got some new, modern ideas, which also keep the lid shut and don't allow any sort of light to come in. For some people, if I'm quite honest, even Christian convictions, I say within some people who have been brought up, maybe like Rachel in the story, they've heard it all in church, and they have the idea, well, I do not, well, not like Rachel, because Rachel these were starting to ask questions. But there are so many people, millions of people around the world, if you want to talk to them about Jesus, they say, oh, yes, I know all about that. I belong to this church, my family has brought me up in it, I was baptized in it, this is, this is who I am because of the traditions that I was brought up in. But sadly, there are many, many people who are caught up in that way of thinking about being a Christian, but actually, they are a closed box. Many people in that situation never really meet with Jesus and never really respond to him as he wants us to. What I would say to you is, take off the straps. Open up the lid. Maybe it's a little crack. And when the light comes in, you'll want to Maybe that's true for somebody because of religious reasons they've got straps on, or maybe it's somebody because just the, the forces of society around you hold you in. Well, let's, I need some help here. Somebody can help me to take the straps off. Thank you. 
see why the angels of Jesus' birth said that the Savior had been born. Do you now see that when Jesus was dying on the cross, he was doing it for you? Now, I'd just like you to try to understand a little bit about the relationship between the Son of God and the Father through all eternity. Through all eternity, this was the absolutely closest and most perfect relationship, most perfect unity that we could possibly imagine. In fact, better than we could possibly imagine. But on the cross, what was happening was that that was being torn apart because Jesus was carrying our guilt. And you heard the cry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus suffered all the penalty that we deserve and was at that moment separated from his God. He bore it and he was raised to death to show that it was done. It was paid for. It was finished. Now, I wonder if you didn't know it before. You see that Jesus comes and offers us forgiveness and new life and hope and light into our lives. He offers us real meaning and value. I wonder if there's anybody here who sometimes struggles with the fact that who am I? Does it really matter that I'm on the world? I don't think you've ever realized. Maybe you have. Do you remember your great grand? or your great-great-grandfather. It's hard, isn't it? Because we never met them. Yeah? And when you get to great-great-great-grandfather, there aren't any photographs or anything. Maybe even names are a bit difficult. Do you ever realize that one day you will be great-great-great-great-grandfathers and grandmothers of people who will have no idea who you are? We, we're comforted sometimes when we think about the meaning of who we are. We're comforted to think, and you're, and you're younger than me. Yeah, when you get older, you get older, you're okay? Comforted to think, ah, oh, yes, but you know, our family will remember me. And after a few generations, they won't. Any meaning that we seem to have will just disappear. But when we are brought into a new living relationship with God, there is I meant with the, the hands being torn apart about what happened when Jesus died on the cross for us. Let's imagine that Bato, foolish person that he is, gets into debt. Okay? I borrow a lot of money and I spend it on foolish things. I don't know if any of you do that. I hope you don't. Um, I spend it on foolish things and I run out of money and then I borrow some more and I spend that and it just gets worse and worse and worse until I reach the point where all of the earning potential that I have from now till the end of my life would never be able to pay off this debt. I would be in a desperate situation. And then somebody comes along to whom I owe nothing and for whom I have never done anything and he chooses simply out of love He even then invites me to come and live in his house and share his life. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <coughs> After this, my previous debtors come along to me and they say, Hey, Marto, do you remember all those millions of pounds you owed us? You haven't paid it yet. What should I say? Should I say, Oh dear, that's right. What can I do? I haven't paid it off. Or should I say, That's right. I haven't paid it, but it has been paid. This wonderful Savior came and paid it all for me. Look, I'm living in his house now. He's my friend. That is the position of the real Christian. That's the position of the person who's taken off the straps, has 
opened up the lid and fully welcomed Jesus into our lives. The one who has paid the debt of sin for us. The one who is now Lord.